What up, what up, people? Happy, happy Sunday. Welcome to the Black Wall Project. Y'all know every Sunday we do the Black Wall Project and we come to y'all and talk about something fascinating, something about Black wealth, Black finance, Black money, and in hopes of highlighting and, and, and escalating or ascending our overall thoughts and, con- and consciousness about Black wealth as it relates. This week, we are going to talk about Tulsa. The Tulsa race riots happened exactly 100 years to the day. Well, to the day tomorrow. So 100 years today or tomorrow is the 100 year anniversary of Tulsa. It's a massacre. Sadly, we've seen a lot of this happen. Tulsa wasn't the only one. You had Tulsa, you had Rosewood, you had Memphis. We had a lot of death at the hands of people, black people being resilient, creating black wealth, being a community and working together to build something out of this catastrophe called America. So today we want to talk about that. And y'all know, as always, it's not going to be too, too heavy. We're definitely going to have fun. I already know Jimmy has jokes about me, I for say that, me and around me. But without ado, I just want to say what's up to my superstar stats. I heard, I saw they was out yesterday doing the thing down in hotels and on stages in Delaware. Spreading the gospel of black wealth. So what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? What's up? Doing amazing, yeah, man. I feel like that, Tracy. I feel like that was a little side eye. No. Yeah, right. Right. Hey, listen, listen, Mr. Yahoo. Listen, first of all, <laughs> I, I want, I'm going to start with this, man. First of all, I, I just want to say that our sister's body it yesterday. Like, For sure. First of all, Courtney had the illest opening line since Prodigy passed. <laughs> <laughs> Is a war going on outside? No, she started her whole talk with like, yo, everybody out here, y'all all going to die. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, that, that's how you starting your talk off? Like, like yes, indeed. Yeah, Bye. y'all all going to die. So then Tracy goes up and Tracy, and we have to follow Tracy, by the way, which is like, I'm never doing that again. See, they, <laughs> <laughs> We got to go before Tracy next yeah, time. Yeah, we go before Tracy. She says, she says, close the door. We about to have a family meeting. I'm like, oh. What's going on here? And Tracy yeah, man. is a whole Tracy sermon. Tracy was going to eulogize us for the next 35 minutes. So she's from now on known as Passa, Passa Tracy. So. <laughs> no, Passa. She got me Passa Tracy. Yeah, yeah Passa man. Tracy. Passa Passa Tracy. I was really ready to like make a donation right there. Like, oh, man. <laughs> she was in her okay. class. So. What's up, Courtney? You quiet over there. I, I heard you bring heat. What, you, you left it on the stage yesterday? Why are you so quiet? I did. I did leave it on the stage. Yo. All right. Well, you oh, need some yeah. coffee. Exactly. Some Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth was there yesterday. Yeah, Liz was there. Oh, Yo, listen, say, Liz. About Latoya was there too. Shout out to Latoya. Latoya, Latoya, Latoya was there yesterday also. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. our folks that kick it with us, they actually pulled up. Yeah. That was dope. That was dope. It was so nice to meet people in person. Agreed. Adrian. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot what it's like to be outside. Like that was weird. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I already, already got the vibe. I already got the vibe of what tonight's going to be. It's a quote unquote holiday weekend, but I said it with air quotes. So I know the shenanigans are going to be flowing. Some of y'all probably got some libations going. Tracy probably got her chalice over there today. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. Chalice. I, I'm actually <laughs> mad. I should have ordered Tracy something started too. last night. But yo, Look at that. Oh, she got a regular oh, mug today. Oh, like before we even get into that, though, we got to recognize that brother Kamar and Mr. Yahoo, man. Like, Stop I find myself, I find myself scrolling Yahoo. Like, I, Yahoo Finance is like a thing. I like the page. I'm gonna scroll on Yahoo and I see Kamar mm-hmm. pull up. I didn't know. So, here's where we're going with the slander, y'all. I it's wasn't on fair. Yahoo. Right? I, was I wasn't I'm on Yahoo. You, right? you were on Yahoo, man. I was just on Yahoo News. I wasn't that high up yet. Now, it's a difference. On, come on. Man. <laughs> So, and this is followed by his appearance on CBS, by the way. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, he followed up. Yeah, Kamari, Kamari trying to front like he don't be out here like uh, Colt Seavers, the stunt yeah, man. Listen, man. <laughs> you gotta got play that humble role, man. But listen, if I don't play the humble role, and I, if I get a big head, I know who the first people going to be to come Molly <laughs> The whole crew, right? So I ain't even gonna, I'm not even going to go down that road, y'all. So y'all, y'all can have fun at my expense. I'm cool with that. The Ooh, fact that you that. said Molly Wap just made my whole day. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great. No. Back to the '80s. Speaking <laughs> of like using terms, Corey's terms yesterday were hilarious. Oh, what did he say? Good. What did he say? Give us the rundown. That's real, kinda, real deal, Holyfield. Yeah, real deal, Holyfield. There was another one that he was like, it wasn't Malarkey, but it was something close to Malarkey. Yeah, it, right? it was. I said Malarkey because I was ready to say, I was ready to say, I was ready to say. Uh, 
so a, a lot of curse words and then I caught myself because we was on camera. I was like, oh man, let me not let me not cuss these folks out. Okay. okay. I was very sick. I definitely was ready to start cussing and flip, cussing and fussing. <laughs> like like the old folks say. I was ready to start cussing and fussing. And I was like, no, let me not do that. Everybody else was all family friendly. I was like, damn, let me not be the only jerk that's not family friendly. <laughs> Hey, 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 I get it. I get it. But I well, let's see y'all. Just be yourself, though. Just be yourself. I, I mean, like, I was being myself. I was just are. being the tamer version of myself. I just said tame. <laughs> you were very tame. It was tame. I agree with that. Yeah. So, listen, I know y'all are probably missing Mr. David Ruffin himself, but he's in some international travels right now. So, everybody give their love and prayers to Malik, who's overseas right now taking mud baths. <laughs> Yo. So listen. Normally, normally this is reserved for the Europeans. What Jimmy and Corey call the six F. That's six Fs. The maybe what's the Mayo sapiens, but yeah, is there. So oh I'm only telling it right to share his happiness with the rest of the family. Oh Yo, my God. apparently somebody got mud in their eye. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta be, uh, you know, transparent. I have one of those pictures, but the difference is. I'm in St. Lucia with other black folks. So <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't get that comfortable around Europeans, but you know. <laughs> that's either here nor there. The shot for our brother, man. He's out here enjoying himself, man. I love to see it. Yeah. 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 Listen, he it's, out there. Happy, like, happy birthday to Mrs. Carter, too. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what I'm about to say. He's out. We're making jokes, but it's all love. He's out here with his wife celebrating birthdays and doing black love to the fullest. I mean, no, no BS. I, yo, that's that's a lovely thing, man, to be able to, to go and enjoy yourself any way you want to, anytime you want to, however you want to put yourself in those kind of positions. So, you know, what I mean, shout out to Malik. Agreed. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, Jimmy, I know you have this week's B.O.B. of the week before we get into our main topic today. Um, who are we talking about? Yeah. So I am. Um, if you if you. Like you could pull it up for me. I got their um IG page. It's okay. a black owned bakery called the Ginger Peach, right? Oh, mm -hmm. so, sexy. Listen, yeah, right. That listen, sounds promising. Listen, man, <laughs> I, put, I put their IG page in there so you can see some of their work. But um, so are we going to be hungry after we see this? All, all I'm gonna say is this, man. They have some handcrafted pastries, and um, my wife has like this addiction to um any sort of box service that you could order food from. Right. Yes, um, I helped with that too. Yes, yeah, and Courtney did contribute to that with the um, <laughs> with that uh, that, that butcher box, right? Holy, yes. holy! Scroll up, come yeah, on, look. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, like, listen, technology takes time, y'all. Oh yeah. Come on, we want to take care of your, that inbox you have. Oh, this is from oh. scratch, scratch. Yes, and they, but they, like, yo, they will. Um, it's a service called Gold Belly. Oh, right? of course, Gold Belly. Come on, she, so she found this on Gold Belly, but we were looking for like black owned spots. They made these cinnamon rolls, yo. That I told her, I said, yo, you got to get them out of the house because I'm, I'm trying to do better in life. And, and <laughs> wow. yeah, so I love um, it. Yeah. So, Where shout out to this it's in Jersey. It's in, um, wait, wait, the cinnamon rolls was down the bottom. You just keep going. Yeah, it's in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Location. I know, but in St. Lawrence, oh, right, there we go. All right, I see. Yeah. Okay, St. Lawrence, right outside of Trenton. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Kamari, I'm also about to drop the uh, actual website so you can um, pull the actual website up. But man, listen, cool. Well, pull up their website real quick and look at the um. As soon as you pull it up, it's like, come on, man. come on, man. A shot today. <laughs> that looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, now I want dessert. Right. <laughs> Damn. I'm now I want dessert and dinner because I ain't here. <laughs> I yeah. had tacos for dinner. Oh, we saw oh, your Spanish. It yeah. worked. My Spanish worked. <laughs> you were a little, a little shaky. It was a little shaky, a little touch and go. <laughs> Yo, those were signs. What? Damn. Ooh, those are nice. They actually cooked. What? Shout out to all the black bakers and, and, and chefs and cooks out there. Shout out to all y'all. What? Yeah, man. And this is uh, a eat the peach. Eat Lawrence the peach. I love the slogan. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> I want <like> that. <laughs> you know, Kamari's out of pocket. Team Peach. <laughs> oh man. Yo, oh, they, they bought their business. This was some Team Peach. Let's go. Yeah. Lauren okay. Township. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You'll be right there. Um, shout to them. You know, shout all to right, all the like, bakers, chefs, and cooks out there. You know, we appreciate all you. To Gordon Avenue. So the location of the the ginger peach is to Gordon Avenue, Lawrence Township, New Jersey, 08648. Phone number is 609-896-5848. So that's, yeah, we got to hit them up. We got to hit them up. Damn. That looks amazing. All right. All right. All right. So listen, y'all, that is our B.O.B. of the evening, our Black-owned business spotlight of the week. Um, As we get ready to get in this, Jimmy, you had a question for everybody. So put it out there. Let I want to see what everybody has to say about. It. Oh no, what I talked to you earlier about? Yes. Oh no, I was t- I was talking to Kamari. I said, listen, I said, I said, five to six songs. There's nobody that can beat Tevin Campbell, man. And I said, we need to. Kamari was laughing at me. I said, yo, we need to do a Tevin Campbell tribute show because we got to give Tevin Campbell his flowers because five Please to six songs. <laughs> five to six songs. Nobody's messing with Tevin Campbell. I just want to put that out there. Yo, Did you say Father's Day songs. I said five to six songs. Oh, five to like, six. No. I I'm not going to lie and say he can have a 20 song versus, but. No, he got at least a good 10 now. And he they're good yeah, 10 he, 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 he stretch, 10 to be a little stretch, but five to six, he's bodying anybody. Listen, you, you say like anybody five, though? Put like three. And then there's a couple others. He, he got he got a nice little run. Nice listen, little man, run. he got five to six songs that, I mean, it's going to I, mean, take, I listen, love, listen, listen, it's gonna I take love Tevin, like, I love the, like Top of the line, Tevin Campbell. I love top of the line, Tevin Campbell. But we're talking about bodying anybody, dog. I mean, obviously, I didn't say that. I'm not talking about ancestors, those that aren't here. Now, living, <laughs> I mean, the other dudes, like, we, we don't speak about the other boy. So once we throw okay. them all out the window, who's left? Usher? I mean, maybe Chris Usher. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't speak on boy either because, you know, he's, he, he, him yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Once we, once we say we don't speak on him, right? So leave him yeah, out. Yeah, I don't speak on uh, the Breezy either, man. Cause, now, no, I ain't know y'all don't speak on Breezy. I mean, oh. personally. I, oh, no, I mean, don't I say mean, nothing good or bad even, about dude. Even his top I don't like the way he treats women, so I don't, I don't really talk about it. Listen, but even even if you did his top six, these six songs that Tevin Campbell got, man, they ain't, they ain't, listen, nobody. Man, listen, I, don't, I, I think you I think you overstating that just Tell me who. Tell me I feel that way, too. I feel that way, Jimmy. Not yeah. Tevin. Not Tevin. Listen, I mean, so Tevin is very talented. Right. Extremely talented. He has amazing voice. Unfortunately, he has not, he never got a chance to really blossom. And I mean, I really had high hopes for him after tomorrow. And I feel like tomorrow was like the, first of all, I'm a 20 Jones fan. So I was listening to Back on the Block the other day. Like I listened to it like at least once a week, just as a clarifying point. But I thought like after tomorrow and then he had kind of like that whole like little run he did like the mid 90s and then life fell apart. I don't know what happened. I'm not going to comment. But I said six songs, though. I'm not talking about his career and what he could have been. I'm talking about those six songs. I, I think you're overstating like, six songs. Always, yeah. always in my heart. Tell me what you want me to do. I'm ready. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, can we talk? Yeah. I mean. Along with you. Can we talk? Yeah, listen. Right, can we talk? Can we talk? Oh, come on, man. No, we're not I mean, saying you're I'll, not good, I'll, Jimmy. I'll do this. I'll take I'll take, six songs, I'll take six songs. I'll take six songs off one album and I'll and I'll and I'll think I'll beat Tevin Campbell with a living person, which is Lauren Hill. Did you say a living person? Yeah, because we hey, talk she, 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 what we, is we, can't, we can't bring the ancestors. Like the Tevin in. died and I didn't know about like no. the <laughs> hell. So that's what means I'm not taking bringing in. Oh, I'm not God. bringing in Prince. I'm not bringing in anybody who's not here. So I would say Lauren Hill off one album nope. <laughs> because she ain't got a whole gang of songs even after that. Album. She only got one album. I mean, so you can't I'll, I'll take that unplug. If you count unplug, that's that unplug, unplug with that unplug, no, I'm not counting it. So we we will. I'll take Lauren Hill that one album. I'll pick six songs off that one album. You and can't. I'll it. You can't. I know. I know you can't because you can't name me six songs off that album because none because none of them are that good that that will stand out to you. Ooh. You can't right now. Wait, is that slander? Oh, is that Lost that slander? ones. Uh, Z- to Zion. Yeah. Uh, 
X Factor. Oh, I don't know the song. Huh? I, no, no, she's trying to help you out. Y'all, y'all, y'all cheating. Y'all, y'all cheating. <laughs> what happened? Everything is everything. Mm-hmm. See, now look, y'all, everything and then everybody going to get it. I guess the Yo, listen, man. Thing. Yo, listen. That, that album, I, I haven't listened to that Lauren Hill album in about six weeks. <laughs> it's a long time for me. I, listen, I listened to Tevin Campbell today. All I'm saying is those six songs I put up against anybody. No, I, and I know, I know but it's not going to be successful. No, no, no. I'm successful. Listen, and I know I was, I know, and I know I, I knew I was getting some pushback. <laughs> pushback. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Question. Y'all say Corey had some pushback yesterday. No, he tried to get back when we were talking. Although, the funny thing is, I was going to point out, but I let it, I let it slide. You gave pushback on something I didn't even say. <laughs> you, you, you did say it, but it wasn't. It was. No, I, I, I remixed it a little bit. Yeah, you definitely you, re, you definitely I remixed it. I, I did, okay. but it wasn't it actually I let, pushback I let, against I it, what you said. I let it slide because it was funny. Yeah. All right, so let's see, y'all. Apparently, y'all always get an inside view. Of this is how we actually argue. Uh, yeah, it, it we is. are always arguing. When you get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten smart people in the room, there's bound to be an argument. But here's the thing: tomorrow is the 100 year anniversary of the riot, of the massacre, of the murder, of the slaying of over two. What is it? 200, 300 black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Greenwood section of Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was called. The ne- uh, Negro, I want to give it the right term. Booker T. Washington gave it this term. America's Negro Black Wall Street or Negro Wall Street. America's Negro Wall Street. So this is the 100 year anniversary of that. I'm really interested to see one from the panel, two from my audience. What are y'all thoughts about Tulsa? Can we bring back a Tulsa or a Tulsa-like situation? I believe we've actually had that kind of conversation Um, a couple times, and I got an issue. I got an issue. It seems like everybody is pandering this week. All the white-owned publications are pandering on this event. I would say they're trying to show homage, but I really feel it's a pandering. Wall Street Journal has ran several stories on it. Forbes is slanderous out here on Instagram. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, But, you know, what do y'all think about? What do y'all think about Black Wall Street and Tulsa? But I'm glad they're saying something. Because at the end of the day, I think someone, I think it was Kevin Matthews, who actually is from Tulsa. He did make a, and he actually has a book called Burning the Blueprint, uh, which is out right now. And it's, it's actually trending on Amazon. But he talks about, he's like, people weren't taught about Tulsa and what happened in Tulsa. And if you don't learn from the past, you're bound to repeat it. And we can actually see that to be in the map that you showed um, earlier this week about all the mass murders and killings and um, just kind of just carnage that's happened over the last hundred years since that's the word. I'm sorry. That's the perfect word, carnage. And so thank you. I mean, is that like supple from like earlier? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I say that to say oh I'm, man. But I say that to say we didn't learn about it. We didn't learn about it in school. And there's so many things that we didn't learn about in school. And am I excited that all these companies are deciding to talk about it now? Um, yes and no. I mean, no, because, again, it just makes very clear that they only talk about black issues when they feel like it. Um, when it's an opportunity, it seems to be a business opportunity. Um, but at the same time is that we're talking about it. And we're able to really have the conversation and set the record straight because a lot of people like to remix what happens. I mean, we even talk about slave slave revolts and let them tell it there was only like two or three, but we know there that they like had five hundred of them joined. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Sorry. Like black people never fought back. Correct. No, enough black people didn't fight back, which is why those revolts got squelched. Because we we had numbers. <laughs> yeah. Well, sadly, that's a that's a failing of education and a failing of us as a community to make sure our people, our children, get properly educated. I, 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 I will I will say this though, and and one of the reasons why um in warfare, black people didn't uh, really win a lot in warfare because war wars used to be fought hand to hand, man to man. 
You know what I mean? Like they would get on the battlefield and they would come out with weapons and smash each other in the head. And that's why we always used to win. <laughs> because if you put us in an arena and you say fight, we gonna kick ass. But then when you started introducing gunpowder to the situation and guns and all of that, we wasn't we wasn't on that type of time. And that's yeah. how the Europeans got control over the map. Because they they they, they we taught them cleanliness. We taught, we taught them some things that kept them from killing themselves, which is cleanliness and things of that nature. And then we we gave them access to our education, and then they built the weapon, and then they took over everything that we had. That's a fact. That's and a so, fact. And so instead of, you know, we was too nice even then because we should have let them go ahead and off they self. <laughs> Oh, my fault. I mean, there's a there's a great book and documentary called Guns, Germs, and Steel that talks about Corey's point. Yeah. Um, very, very, very well. Well. So Tracy, what do you think? What what's your commentary? What are your thoughts on Tulsa and everything that would happen? Um, you know, the the commemoration and the conversation is a big one. Um uh those who are not of melon, welcome to the discussion. <laughs> you know, glad, glad you guys are on board. You know, they like to say for Black History Month, Black History Month isn't for us, it's for y'all. Um, so that way y'all can take a minute and actually really understand our history and things that we've been through. Um, don't know if y'all know that there is actually a um history channel commemoration that's happening tonight at eight o'clock. Uh, for the Tulsa burning 1921 race massacre premieres tonight at eight on the history channel okay. is executive produced by uh, NBA player, Russell Westbrook and directed by Peabody award winning director, Stanley Nielsen and Marco Williams. Uh, so they are promoting a lot of that right now because of who's behind it. And the fact that it is a social topic right now to be discussing the diversity, you know, token at this point. So I'm just kind of glad that we're talking about it because I do feel like the people that are hearing about it now are probably hearing about it for the first time. Um, do I think that we can do another Black Wall Street? Yes. Do I think it's going to look the way that it did with Tulsa? No. I think it's going to be a different frontier. It very well may be virtual land. Hey. But I think I think the, the shift is coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jimmy, what you got on this? Um, Tracy stole my point about the fact that we can do it, but it will just look different. And um, you know, I just like to add that uh that's history that we should talk about. Like we, we should have been talking about this, you know. Um, because believe it or not, a lot of our folks have no idea about the story, right? Um, what's the name of the book? Other brother wrote uh, Black Fortunes, right? Black Fortunes, yeah. Shamari, Shamari yeah. Wills. Yeah, Shamari Wills, Black Fortunes. That 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 story was crazy. Um, talking about O.W. Gurley, like you know, that's one of my favorite parts of the book is when he talks about uh, Black Wall Street. And then, and then I know it sounds crazy, but it was pretty humorous. We would talk about running away from what was going on. And <laughs> you read the book, right, Kamari? I did. I and even then, did a video review of it. Okay. When, oh, yes, you did. I apologize. I absolutely watched your video on YouTube. Everybody yeah, go follow Kamari on YouTube, by the way, the finance rebel, <laughs> um, Mr. Yahoo. But no, um, but seriously, though, um, that book is a must read. Anybody who watches this show, that book is something that you absolutely have to read. It's called Black Fortunes because it goes over Black Wall Street, but so much more. Um, and I, I'm, I'm actually excited to watch this uh, documentary, um, you know, set the DVR to make sure that I, it's recorded in case we're still on here pontificating. But I'm very excited about it. I like to see that it's embraced like this, but is it going to be like, ne let's see what happens next year, right? Next year, everybody's going to forget on about it. On the 101st anniversary, nobody's going to be, 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 be saying a damn thing. Probably not, but I do think it's something that we should discuss like every year. You know, this is something that we should really talk about. But yeah. the question I have is the biggest point I want to make is what do we learn from it, right? What do we learn from it? Moving forward, what can we, what can we take from that that was good, but what can we correct and make sure that when we do build something that it, you know, why are you laughing? I'm dead serious. Like, no, 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 because it reminds me of something my grandmother told me when I was eight years old that I still carry today. What's that? That the most dangerous thing to a black man is a white woman. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. Um, oh, come on, Nana. Uh, yeah, 
I'm just that's why I started giggling when you said what did you learn from it? Because my <laughs> grandmother, that's what my grandmother told me about it. And this <laughs> issue, very, the issue of Black Wall Street or Tulsa or Greenwood was very much like an Emmett Till type situation. Yeah, it was. It, but see, my grandmother was born in that era. Correct. And so to me, it was, but it wasn't, right? So to me, that was the that was they were looking for an excuse. Yeah. Which but is why I was made up. for an excuse. But that's, that's my problem. thing. Yeah. So it really wasn't yeah. even about that. It was about okay, now we figured out a little way we can finagle to start like, you know, causing havoc. Mm-hmm. Okay. Courtney, did you go yet? I did. Come on first. Okay. Yeah, I, I I didn't go actually. You go ahead, you go you ahead. Go. Corey, you just talked. All right, well, go, Corey. I'm sorry. No, no, I I was just because I I was inserting myself in the conversations, bro. Uh, it was just so I didn't really actually go. I was just talking trash. But the um the thing about Black Wall Street that I want people to know is that they loved each other enough to buy from one another and live near each other, and it was financially prosperous because they circulated money amongst themselves and. And they built it up the way they, it, other people were jealous of them, like we are jealous of other cultures right now, right? Because they did things the way that they should be done. So when, but I want to take when people to take away from this, we got to stop saying that we can't do it because we've done it. What's happened is the government. Every time we do it, the government insert they in, in, in these male and the, you know these uh, pink toe people insert themselves in our business. So what we got to stop doing is allowing these pink toes to get in our business, man. Pink toes. Okay. Okay. So what I what I'll say is I think the whole issue of Tulsa and Oklahoma is very interesting because Tulsa and Oklahoma was basically a safe haven for black folks running away from other races, issues, and lynchings in other states, mm-hmm. um, and that's very very well documented. So. As Corey said, as Jimmy said, you know, they were kind of running away from racist issues to only find themselves ensnared in racist issues. And so that's, they, they, they weren't necessarily running away, though, because Tulsa. No, they were. They absolutely were. No, no, not all of them, because they Tulsa was a, 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 a place where there was oil and there was um. You know what I mean? So there, it was a place where of economic prosperity. So all, everybody wasn't just running away from racist stuff. Like Tulsa was was a lynch, like a, a hotbed of economic activity. It was, but the Trail of Tears, um, which, which led, which led to those, a lot of those indigenous right. people being it, in that space, and and black folks, African folks who were previously enslaved, so they got moved to Oklahoma. There was like twenty seven black own towns or black only towns in Oklahoma. So everybody kind of focuses on Tulsa, the Greenwood section of Tulsa, missing kind of the overall story. And one of the things, Jimmy brought up Black Fortunes, but one of the things that really, really impressed me in Black Fortunes was a gentleman by the name of Robert Church. Robert Church was from Memphis. Robert Church helped fund Ida B. Wells. Robert Church was out there shooting the police. Robert Church saved, he saved Memphis from going bankrupt, right? When he had the plague. Memphis was also a scene of several riots and things like that. But Robert Church also funded many missions to have people from Memphis and Tennessee to go to Oklahoma because of all the racial tension there. So yes, Corey, did people jump on and go because there was economic opportunity and the potential of cohesion and and love yes but largely it was a it was it was a safe haven no i i, I understand what you're trying to say yeah right. it, was a res- it, was a, it was a respite for black folks trying to get away from white supremacist attacks and again that's what they wound up dealing with and as demi said folks is really just looking for a reason to do it because they was mad black folks was getting on and doing their thing i mean and they did the same thing to harlem they did the same thing to harlem <laughs> They did I mean, the same, they, they didn't burn Harlem down like all at one time, but the, the same same did, I'm just saying though they, they did the same thing in Rosewood, they did the same thing in Wilmington, North Carolina. You know, I mean they did they, 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 they do it everywhere with we had we had more than one safe haven, is what I'm trying to right. say. I'm not no, trying no, to no, I got you, but that was the only safe haven. I'm just saying we had we had more than one black Wall Street, and every time that we do something progressive, 
we let other people insert themselves into our and we we build it, but we don't build a, a, a protection uh mechanism in there. So as I as I as I finish my thought after y'all push back over, that was going to be my thing. We have to think about black wealth from a whole <laughs> standpoint, and not only from our health and our money, but also our own defense. <laughs> we got to really start taking that more seriously. Um, I love what Killer Mike said when he said black folks always want to talk about separating, but can we shoot? Can we fight? Can we fish? Can we cook? Can we farm? We can't do a lot of those things. And sadly, a lot of those things aren't on the on the discussion block, and I think they should be. Well, it's not on the discussion block because we allow the government to educate our children. Oh man, we don't, Facts. We don't take it at home. So right. that's the reason why. I mean, their curriculum is more based on testing more so than anything else. So when they come home, they can test, you know, they can standardize tests to the cows come home, but they really cannot do anything more than that. Right. It's I, not functional. Education is not functional. No, I mean, here's the thing. And sometimes and the thing is, is that on a lot of things they focus on, it is functional. Like I think Jimmy talked about it the other day. He was like, I hated ge geometry until I had to read plans. So yeah. there's some things that are very functional, but there's other things that I think in the manner in which it's taught. Like I don't even really want my kids to learn history from school because I was like, y'all edit it in such a way that just makes it false. It's fiction. It's I've been history. homeschooling my kids for five years because I didn't want my kids to learn history in school. Yeah. I just took my kids out of school, up. period. I just took them out of school. I, was like, I can't keep taking it. Right. That, but that's why I say that it's about what we learn from that. And you talk about security. Like, you right. know, security is a must. I mean, I, I know we, we can get some private security if we need it. But outside of that, though, <laughs> I, as a people, as a people, we need to like really focus on security, right? Um and think about this though, how everything is connected, right? So the folks that would be the security or that that um the kind of people within our community, where are they putting them at? They're putting them behind bars, right? right. For non for non-violent offenses, right? So it's right. all these all these things are connected, right? Right. So so we're fighting wars on so many fronts, right? We're fighting right. wars in the health front, in the judicial mm -hmm. system, financially. We fight wars everywhere, man. Yeah. You can't my thing is you can't win the war without warriors. Right. Definitely. So a lot of the warriors is getting put behind bars. Right. And the, and, and the thing is, we helping to put them behind there. Right. Because we talk we, we, we like to ostracize people in our community that do things that are outside of what we call the norm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so instead of embracing and, and, and redirecting, we like to ostracize. Right, and yeah, so what you could also say, right? And you, I, listen, you, can all, you can I, I, let, let me let me finish the thought, and then you can push. Oh, back. I gotta you let you finish because you ain't no, let no, me no, finish. No. Oh. no, no, you don't have to let me. No, finish. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but what what I wanted to say is is that you can hold these people accountable in a lot of different ways besides putting them behind bars. Right. And, and so my thing is, we have to create a culture of accountability, though. Like, all right, if, if you don't do X, Y, and Z, you don't receive X, Y, and Z. Instead of saying you don't belong here at all, all right, let's say if you can redirect, you can be as soon as you can redirect, you can re, you can get back as part of the collective. But we as a collective are we haven't shown enough growth that people want to be part of that greater collective because we haven't done really anything as as we haven't shown enough growth as a. Um, as a mass unit, not saying in individual pockets, but as we a mass unit, we don't even acknowledge that we're at war. That's all I want to say. Like, we first of all, we have to oh, man. say, word. say, say, word. Word. and the wars are fought on so many fronts. I mean, to quote the wise philosopher, Mr. Brown, like, ain't no Uzi's made in Harlem, right? Right, so, so all these issues that, that, that happen, we have to understand the bigger picture, and, and we have to acknowledge that we are at war. Hi, right, Nino. So, uh, Jimmy's I quoting the great Nino Brown. So, <laughs> let's um, let, let's go to the comments real quick and let's say what's up to our people. You know, Don Johnson's in the building. What's Don, up? What's up, beloved? Hey, Don. Hey, hey Monica. Hey, hey. hey, hey Toya. Toya. Thank you for showing out last night, Toya. All right, Don says maybe we should only refer to it as a massacre and not a riot. Words that many. You know what, Don? I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I, actually, I actually, so. actually, yesterday I did a whole segment talking about this, but from a different angle. Um, and somebody said the same thing. They said it wasn't a riot; it was a massacre. 
And to you, sir, I would say you're correct. Yeah, that's a great point, Don. Right. Uh, hey, Elizabeth. Hey, hey, hey. Shout out to Elizabeth. Yeah, thanks for showing out for us also. Yeah. Yo, uh-huh. I'm I don't forget about you, bro. I'm going to give you a call once I get off here. I owe you a call. Jose, what's up? What's happening, brother? How you doing? All right, so Latoya says they will put all forces behind trying to dismantle anything that looks like our success. But, right. so that goes yeah. to the point of the question of like, what can we do? And I, I mean, and I get to a point, I think the only thing we can do is secure ourselves properly because otherwise is that they find ways to undo everything we do. I'm over here, but they have a, I think culturally they have a way of minding other people's business. I'm minding my business over here, and here you come traipsing over here to bother me. I wasn't bothering you. And I feel like that happens on a regular, like you can even see people at work. You know, like I'm my, my business, but here you come. Like culturally, like what part of this? I'm not bothering you. Now you can't even feed pigeons in this world. Like <laughs> they're going to bother you. Yeah, can't watch birds. Yeah. You can't do anything. You can't. Right. And I, I think to It'll speak enjoy. about us being in war, I think that's a very important point is that we can't do anything without being harassed, bothered, whatever. We have a list of, I mean, at first it was interesting to say Skittles, you know, Skittles in Arizona, bird watching. We can have a whole laying in bed with your, with your significant other. We have a whole driving down the street. I mean, we had a driving while black in the 1990s and that really just has now expanded to everything. And, We've and always had a driving while black. I'm sorry. We've always had a driving while black. Well, no, no, no. But we started talking about it. I mean, I don't know if you guys uh, remember it. Like in the 90s, we really started having a real conversation. But now we actually expanded the conversation, but we still don't have, have expanded the solutions. I still don't have more solution than I did in 1999. 99? Right. I thought you were talking about 91 when Rodney King got smashed across his face. I did too, but it's cool. All right, let's I get back to the comments. So older than I am? Let's get back to the comments. <laughs> Mrs. King. Everybody, everybody say hello to Joy. Hello, Joy. All right, Elizabeth says Courtney hit y'all with the Chris Rock horoscope from Champagne. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hello, Elizabeth. All right, Latoya says I'm still high from yesterday. It was so dope. It was so proud of y'all. See, I told y'all the team is full of rock stars. They rock stars, y'all. Minus me, Malik. Listen, I'm Otis. Y'all let Malik slander my name. I'm Otis. I'm cool with that. And Malik's David Ruffin. And y'all see where he's at. And taking mud baths with six Fs. (laughs) 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 Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Hey. (laughs) All right, Master Tracy. Right, let's get some answers and strut away. Listen. All right. This is all with the family. There may be some libations there, huh? Some libations. Here we go. Happy Sunday. Yes, you're supposed to invite us over. (laughs) <laughs> Elizabeth showed up without a book. I know next time we see Elizabeth, she better have some books. <laughs> yes. Oh, speaking of being invited over, y'all are invited to do the podcast over at the house when it is done. Nice. Okay. Oh, we have a lot of podcasts at the Oh, okay. man. All right. So, who else is on Yahoo News, though? Listen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't play that. Talk don't to play him. That. Talk to him, Elizabeth. Yeah. How fast you went by that comment, though? No, I had it up for a minute. I had it up for a minute. Don says that's some boomer terms. He's talking about Corey. <laughs> I'm a lot of Oh, the Molly Wap. Oh, all right. Molly Wap, too. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Y'all take Who shot, John? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love them. those are my favorites. Jimmy told the truth and shame the devil. He said, I can give y'all all the game because y'all ain't. <laughs> Want to do nothing with it anyway? That, that's right. He, listen, he gave him the straight facts and statistics, yep. and they didn't want to hear it. Yep, mm. it's all bars, all bars. Big facts, big facts. It's, it's true though. Yeah. <laughs> listen, that's that, that's why we give so much away for free, right? <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> hey Rochelle, how you doing? Hey Rochelle, yeah, what's, what's going on, Rochelle? Hey. Hey Tyrone. Shout out to Rochelle, right? Yo, first off, I just gotta tell y'all, I gotta put on the record that Tyrone is a legend. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, man. Hey, big fan. Wow, what happened? Nothing. He, he did some legendary things, yeah, man, that we felt out about. Absolute legend. All right. 
Seven camels plus baby baby face was that word. Okay, yes, baby face, absolutely. But I don't try to do ninety eighties and nineties mixtapes out here. I said, okay, baby face. (laughs) 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 I was see, but listen, the first one was hilarious though. (laughs) It was. Oh my! I don't know about seven with Prince. I mean, that's why I said I said somebody that's here. You know what I'm saying? But to to that point though, when y'all bring up baby face, I gotta apologize to him because baby face. Yeah, that, that'll be a problem. But yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I just want y'all to put some respect on Tevin Six songs. Six. So listen, Tracy got us together earlier with the with the goings on and the, the program on the History Channel. I wanted to talk about it, and I was afraid to talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. Oh. Versus tonight is gonna be fire. Oh, the verses. So, uh, Timbo versus Swift, and that's oh, kind of back to the essence of where verses came from in the first place. Oh, the rematch, okay. okay. Yep. I think yep. you're talking about Bow Wow and Soldier Boy. No, no. I'm not Drake. Watching. <laughs> All right, so Latoya says, so it's not even a fair debate. Tevin is a singer. Usher and Chris are entertainers. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Well, Usher, Usher is a singer. Yeah, Usher, Usher can actually sing. Usher a legend. I mean, listen, but all, 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 all I want to say. <laughs> exactly. Unplugged is her best album. Listen, Monica's a Lauren Stan. Like it goes beyond fans. So I listen, knew that was. I knew that was eventually by the public. No domestic violence. No domestic violence. Unplugged is the best. Oh, oh man! Sneakers. <laughs> oh, my man is full. But listen, well, I actually listen. Actually, listen he I has actually a talk point, to people who work with Lauren. I talk because uh my 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 uh one of my friends uh that used to, to come to the show a lot, uh Sean, um, uh, you know, uh Alney, the boy from Alney, his his wife is is in that circle, and, and uh a lot of the people that's in that circle uh say the same thing that Tyrone says. Yes, Robert Glasper. <laughs> Robert Glasper has said the same thing, if you need a reference. <laughs> All right, Lauren. These music discussions tickle me because y'all have violence every time. Ah, that's I, mean, Jimmy. I don't, that's I don't Jimmy. choose violence. Listen, I got some unpopular opinions, but I'll be telling the truth, though. <laughs> Listen, Jose, we want to bring some joy, right? We want to have some fun. We want to yeah. talk about some serious things. In a, in, a wor- in a world full of hurt, a little joy. Right. Yeah, yeah, we need some All right, coming on the History Channel tonight at 8 p.m. All right. Yeah, uh, all right, after yesterday's conversation, virtual spaces and crypto looks <laughs> like Wall Street. Very much so. Hey. Very much so. Hey. Yep. All right, so Tyrone says, I have to agree with Kamari that there's a lot of pandering regarding Tulsa. I'm really not here for it. Thank you, Ty. Yeah. Black proud, brother. Like, I feel y'all, but it's it's got to be done. We got to start I mean, bringing I get it. But, I mean, let's call it what it is, though. They oh, don't really care, right? They don't really care. They're just doing it as a profit center. Okay, cool. I get it. And I, I and I don't I don't disagree with that. I just feel like these twenty somethings and below who have never heard it now might actually get it in earshot or eye shot, and that's all I care about. Well, one of one of my requests tonight was to ask everybody because it's better for us to tell our stories than these white establishments because that's when our stories get remixed. I'm gonna come to that in a minute though. But it's better for us to tell our stories than these white than these white establishments, these six F establishments to tell. And I get it, I, I do. And it's, there's no real shade because some of the some of the stories that are being written are being written by black folks, right? Yeah. So again, there's, there's no shade at the people writing the stories, but the editing rooms are very very vicious. I want you to tell the folks about that Forbes headline, like the part of the I am, I'm coming to it. Okay, you can get to that. Okay. Yeah, I, want, I want to acknowledge the people first. All right, so not told it all right. No, it's not told at all, sadly. Mm-hmm. All right, Jose says, yes, we can bring back a torture situation. We would need a unified body to govern the development, then a community body that not only economically supports it, but is also willing and able to physically develop the buildings and businesses. All right, so Jose is talking about actually having an actual neighborhood, bricks and mortar. Built um, Yeah, okay. I'm not interested. I'm not. Okay. Interested. okay. The reason why I say I'm not. Listen, watch the map. Ooh, I'm trying Ooh. to get to the comments there, but go ahead. I know, but no, I, think, no, I think no. we have to have you, a real you have, conversation. You have, you have. Even, even in 1985, that that tried to 
that happened in Philadelphia. There was a whole community that was. <laughs> yep. And, and what happened in 1985 on they Mother's Day weekend? They, they burnt down like five blocks trying to get one, like 10 people out of a, of a small community that they built. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. So that's the reason because I'm not interested in putting us in, in danger because we have decided to go about our, our way in public. I feel like entirely we often do too many things in public that should be done to Tracy's point yesterday behind the closed door. Close the door, baby. Close I mean, but we can still we can still live together. Um, <laughs> Listen, by the way, by the way, I just want to bring up this though. Um, I just finished the book, uh Monica and I both read it, uh, The Devil You Know by um Charles Blow. Um, which is a pretty yeah, good read. It yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, but he has a old, his own game plan that he has laid out. Um and he gives uh, it gives reasons for why. Um that he feels like we should move and it's a political statement in terms of where you live. And mm -hmm. he feels like he feels like as as a community, we should all occupy the states in the south. And he has a whole thesis and the reasons why he says so, but it's about political power. Um, so I think it's an interesting, uh, you know, just, just as someone who's putting his thoughts out there, I thought it was a pretty good book. I mean, black people did move to all one place and then that state changed all the rules about voting. Well, the same thing happened to Oklahoma, actually, too. Ironically, history definitely repeats itself. And then the same thing is happening in Texas because a lot of black people move, move into Houston and the surrounding areas. Man, Texas is not a pocket, but Texas be doing stuff like I hear they're trying to get rid of the laws where you even have to uh, register your gun. Like everybody can just have whatever they want. Yeah. Well, oh, they're turning it back into the Wild Wild West. Yeah, Texas is not a pocket. Too many black people moving back to Texas. Yeah. All these they don't want the black people moving back to Texas. The, I, I was going to bring this up earlier, but the reason why they won't get rid of the Second Amendment is because white people won't have no advantages. If they don't got guns, because they know black people only kill each other with guns, they won't kill them. Well, see, there's the problem though, because the thing is, if if we're gonna have them, we gotta understand that we gotta stop shooting ourselves. Because when we shoot other our brother, that's what we doing. We shooting ourselves. It's a lot of self hate. I mean, I'm just saying, but the, that's the whole reason why they will never get rid of the second. I mean, amendment. listen, you got guns. We no, got hold on, y'all. I want to get to uh, I want to get to Elizabeth's point because she was kind of piling on, not piling on, but following up to Jose's point. And I think it's uh, very interesting to what you just said, Jimmy. So I would prefer we stop states from passing legislation that keeps this these discussions from being talked about in schools. These companies are looking for coins, right? So part of the issue is, you know, a lot of the schools want to have, they don't want to have any race theory taught at all. Um, and that's a major, major issue because a lot of us aren't talking about this at home because a lot of us don't know. Right. And again, Corey brought this up earlier. But what I was going to say, too, is that the government introduced crack. The government introduced redlining. I mean, when you really think about redlining, and I know you're probably tired of me talking about redlining. It's big but, crack, never, ever. But, but the government's created the hood. The government's created the streets, the proverbial streets, right, that so many of us pledge allegiance to. Yeah. So when we pledge allegiance to the streets, we're really pledging allegiance to white supremacy. But a lot of us don't really don't Same really word. recognize that. <laughs> wow. We, we put a we put a post on our page the other day with the boy Greg with you know big business was talking about you don't own the streets that you right. don't you know what I mean like you know and he was dead right a lot of people died and went to jail for property that they never didn't own and then now it was white people walking around with dogs and, and, and they re and they revitalizing these neighborhoods and, and these people are dead. But I think in that point they never owned. And that point, Corey, right, I think the thing he said that really hit me hard is that y'all fought for these blocks and these streets and these corners, but now these folks are moving in and nobody even knows who the fuck you are. Mm. Yep. And that is like, damn, he's right. He's right, though. He's right. So we got to we gotta play the game smarter um, than, than what we had before to a certain extent. And that's no diss to any of the ancestors. I'm just, way, we should use it as a learning experience. To Go Elizabeth's ahead. point, Texas already got rid of uh, the, the race theory out of all the textbooks yep. in Texas. They already got rid. They the first ones. They yep. said, yeah, Texas, get out of here. Texas was also calling what uh, slaves migrant workers. Yeah, yeah. That's they yes, also, they were. That's also Texas. Yeah. All right. So uh, Latoya says we're still too nice now. See the Amy Cooper, aka Central Park Karen shenanigans of this week. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I saw it, Latoya. What happened? These Karens, they're just running amok, and it's it's really becoming disgusting. But I got a whole theory about that. 
I think I think they're starting to see the shift and they're starting to see that they're not as protected like they used to be before in a blind kind of my white queen is now protected and anything she can do, she can do nothing wrong. I think now that veil has come off and they're freaking out because they now have to actually like explain themselves and they can't just call and say, oh, so-and-so did something to me in the park, come and get them by my word only. So it's just becoming a little bit out of hand because they're just doing any and everything at this point to get attention. And it's just, it's just disgusting and sickening. But I think I remember now she's actually suing her former employers for firing her. Yeah. If I remember correctly, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that, that's hilarious. After she, uh, said that a black man in Central Park tried to attack her and there was full, full on video that he did no such thing. And nope. her employers got a hold of it. She was like an investment banker or something. They got a hold of it and then they fired her. And now she's firing them for racial discrimination. Sis. I mean, suing them for racial discrimination. Sis, sis. You're, you're her, I mean, I don't know if she has an employment agreement, but most employers have like a res, not a respectability clause, but like don't embarrass us in these streets. Sure. That's like they use they have a code of ethics. And you embarrass them. I mean, whether right, like you were wrong, let's be very clear. Like, it's not like we don't have videotape on you doing something wrong. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, is that people found out because the internet is so vast, people found out where you worked. And guess what you did? You embarrassed the company. You embarrassed the company. You cost us money. You got to go. I mean, and it was a business decision. So, I mean, I, if I had to guess, they're probably going to settle and give her some money. But since you don't deserve anything, and I really wish the 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 gentleman who had that happen to him actually was aggressive and was like, "Nah, you what you going to do is you want you because it was a it was a false report, which is a felony, right? You need to go. He didn't press no charges. I think that's the he didn't charges. I mean, that's kind of what the employer is getting at. Like that is what the player is. Yeah, we're still too. We're still too. Like. I, I, think, I think there's a beauty in that, but it's also sad, right? There's a beauty in that because as a people, we're godly people, so we like we, we have empathy. We like we like I don't want to deal with that, right? So there's 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 a, a certain beauty to that, but at the same time, again, we have to recognize we are at war. Right. All right, so stop the presses, y'all. I just remember something. Jimmy, you did something very admirable this week, sir, last week, and I forgot to mention it. Uh, about the slander. I had no idea what he about to say. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm gonna give you your flowers, right? Oh, okay. Jimmy out in these streets investing, getting getting people squatting on his properties. He can get them <laughs> locked up. And he cho- he didn't choose violence, y'all. He did. He did. He chose he to talk to the young man mm-hmm. and get him to remove his stuff. But I don't want to take all the thunder. Jimmy, tell us about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I had um, a project. I was getting ready to start a real estate project. And uh, um, a gentleman, let's call him a young gentleman, took the, it was actually boarded up um, in, in Shata Kahan. He's familiar with the property. He was actually boarded up. He took the board off and he turned the property into a trap house. He had pit bulls and Lord knows what else inside. Right, so hold on, Jimmy. What's a trap house, house? Please? Yeah, what? Yes, please define trap house. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a structure that he was using for um his activities, his business, his um, business activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, illegal. His illegal it's, business. It's street business, right? He, he's used it for a street business. So, um, you know, but instead of instead of calling the authorities, I had a conversation. I said, "Look, I'll give you a couple of days to get everything out of here." But you know, after that, it is what it is. I'm, you know, just trying to give him an opportunity because I told him, I said, look, I'm not trying to get you in trouble, not trying to get you arrested or anything. Just, you know, get your stuff out of here so I can start demolition and start working on the property. Um, and he did. So well, the funny thing is I talked to the neighbor and initially the neighbor was trying to get me to call the police right away because, again, he's next to him. So he, he knew what was happening and he, he wanted to away from his property. But the neighbor called me after he after I left and said, listen, within 20 minutes, he removed everything. So he was really protecting whatever it was he had in there. So everything worked itself out, um, you know, demos and, and construction start on Wednesday, but everything worked its way out and nobody got in trouble. No harm, no foul. Um, and I, I wanted to bring that story up because, again, one salute to you, Jimmy. But a lot of times we as a community, and this is all going to tie in, we say money over everything. Jimmy could have said money over everything and just called the cops. Instead, let me be a human being. Correct. Let me be a community member. Yeah. Let me talk to my brother right. and see I can, you know, remedy the situation without getting them folks involved. And this right. is what we talk about loving each other. Right. Loving each other enough to talk to to each other. Talk right. to right. And you know, <laughs> you know I, I recognize though, just like being out in the world and, and, I, and I get why, but a lot of times we're scared of our own people. 
Correct. We, should, we shouldn't be. Because a lot of times you just got to talk to somebody. You got to talk to them. And, and, and to see them. if there's even, if, if there's an even opportunity to reason. If they cool, cool. But if there is no opportunity to reason and they're not hearing you, all right, cool, then we got to do what we got to do. Yeah, but right. at least take the step to attempt. Mm -hmm. Right. So salutes to you, Jimmy. See, you, slander. All no slander. Up. Listen, I, listen All I apologize, Mr. Yahoo. That was actually, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, y'all. I tried to spread love with my brothers and sisters. And what do they do? Stab me. In the <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you. When I saw that, I was like, I shared it. I'm like, look at my brother right here on Yahoo. You, you, and Corey, you and Corey definitely shared it. I appreciate it. Repping the culture, man. <laughs> All right. So Elizabeth says, I'm letting the Mayo Clan in. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tyron says, I honestly think the creative idea is to get into this blockchain and establish our land virtually and take that money just an idea. Yeah. Well, I think it's more than an idea. It's already in play. It's already in motion. Yeah, definitely. It's oh, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. All right, Rochelle says, maybe we can make sure we talk about it in the community. That's where I learned about it. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Tyron says, Jimmy and Corey got behind in, in line last night. <laughs> That must be inside joke. No, in no. terms of blockchain and everything, you say you're talking about like virtual land and blockchain. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, I read it wrong. Okay, okay. Jimmy and Corey got my behind in line last night. Gotcha. Correct. Correct. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Learn that group economics works. It absolutely works. Listen, all wealth comes from group economics. That's the trick. All of that, yep. That's the trick they played on us. Yep. This whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps bullshit is that. All the banks is pooled money. Insurance companies pooled money. Hedge funds pooled money. Co major corporations pooled money. Like DeFi banking. Yes, That's all of it. it. DeFi banking is pooled money. Uh, all right. Skip, so you, skip says, the comment. you skipped the comment right before that. I just want to acknowledge the brother because um where That's uh, right Samuel yeah because Samuel um he's a new member of Body Head University he actually was he was in the building last night so yep. okay. Okay. Not, thanks thanks for coming out showing out Samuel yeah appreciate you but well, I'm not sure what he was laughing at that's why I'm probably that. probably me something I said yeah because Jimmy you're just so funny Thank but you. all right CJ all right says fact check hey those people have been jealous mm -hmm. of never been jealous never been never been jealous of their groups it has always been the exact opposite. We've never said that they were. I did. I did. Oh, uh, um, because right now I say we get jealous of other groups right now because we always talk about how we should do things like the Chinese or we should oh, do things you. like Jewish people. And but I don't think that's jealousy. But uh, whatever we we can call it whatever you want. But what I'm saying is we we were the standard, which is why they tore it down. They didn't want us to be the standard. Yeah. Yeah, I think we are a little covetous of other organizations, I, I, other cultures. I see that. Like, oh, well, why can't we do it like them? Or why can't we, why can't we I just? That, I hear that like thirty times a day. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we don't know what it is to do it like us because, to Corey's point, it was taken away from us. The right. way that we have worked and operated, they specifically and purposefully did. It. I mean, even when they brought over um, people, they brought over Africans and put them into bondage. Man, I think there are some government actions that happened since 1900. <laughs> that too, but I mean, even still, but even the system, they made sure that they put people in different tribes next to each other so they couldn't communicate. Yeah, they listen, did that on purpose. Yeah, so, man. so that was kind of the that was the initial breaking up. Like you've been doing it since we landed here, and then you know, ultimately, even when we became when we we had our quote freedom, um, or we were freed from bondage, they were still doing it in another way. It was always a way to kind of break apart and separate. Yeah, but I, I think there is a crabs in the barrel issue here. And yes, a lot of it was taught through save, through slavery, or let me correct myself, through enslavement, because we're not slaves, right? But I, I'll I'll say this, though, right? The minister, Minister Louis Farrakhan, has even said, we can learn from the Jews. It's not being covetous or jealous of them. They operate in a manner that could be very conducive for our community's uplifting. Or, or he could have said we could learn from, he, he, or he could have said we could have learned from Wilmington, or we could have learned from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He could have said that from no, our we, Well, that was, no, because, because in that no, because don't that's have a, that. The thing is, that's a shortfall. Our people no, don't no, no, have no, 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 no. So let me finish. Let me finish my thought, right, before right. you push back, right? The Jews have culture across countries. 
right? Not across cities That's or anything else. They have it across countries. They're able to move and manipulate and do things for their own interests across countries, not cities, because they adhere to their own people. And they have I think, security. They got security. Think, and they got security facts. And I think who, that's who the do point. security though. I mean, you know, who who are the, who is who are they security? JM management. There you go. <laughs> what, do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean? What are they secure? Yo, I, I uh, yo, I'm say Tracy, <laughs> Tracy is slanderous. Yo, Tracy, yo, stop. Listen, what I will say, <laughs> what I will no. say is this though. What I will say. <laughs> The, um, what's it? The defamation league, Kamari. Uh, play with them if you want to play with them. Ask Nick Cannon how they move. Yeah, facts. All right. So, <laughs> Rochelle says I know about it, but thought it was was not real until Idlewild, and that was here in Michigan. I don't think I know about Idlewild. I know about Idlewild the movie. Was I'm about the, to say, no, I'll, but she's talking about something else. No, that's what she was talking about. That's what that's what the movie's based on, though. right? Yeah, out of while was based uh, on the story in Michigan. Okay, but oh was God. there a burning? Was there a massacre? <laughs> the Jim is killing me. Huh? All right. yeah, man, Tracy, I'm sorry. Tracy just Tracy was just being super duper. She shady, shady, shady boots. Right, well, right. Rochelle, shady me Clue us in a little bit more about Idlewild. This might be a learning opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Rochelle. Um, I love how Corey gives me alternate names. <laughs> Mayo <laughs> Sabians and Pink Toes. <laughs> we got a whole, we got a whole, we got a whole, I got a whole got a, vocabulary full of jokes. We got no, they, ain't got a, they got a dictionary, a thesaurus, yeah. and everything yeah. in between. <laughs> All right, Camby. What's up, Camby? We need to create history books for children that have multiple perspectives and include the stories that have been omitted from mainstream textbooks. Fact. There are lots of those books out there. Have you ever read the book Lies My Teacher Told Me? Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, man. Mm. All right. Now, if we try to build up black communities and businesses, we get called racist. Yes, we do. But we don't need to, we don't need to worry about, we don't need to worry about mainstream media, though. We're going to get called that anyway. We need to start worrying about what people call us. Correct. Yeah. Just do it. Pastor says, I, I went to HBC and never learned about 1921. 19. Wow. 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 Listen, I've had wow. like 12 African American studies classes. I never heard anything about Tulsa from anyone. Paul's not lying. They don't wow. teach it. Wow. That's a whole class, though. If you could actually, in African American studies, you actually had a, a history of all the mass of of the massacres of you know the United States against you, you know. Can, you can literally class. teach. Yeah, that would definitely be a, that's a whole class. A class. That's a whole, I don't like that. I'm gonna do that class, y'all. I'm gonna do that class. Hey, I'm gonna teach it. Do it. Find, find one of these uh, universities around here. You know, there's some some HBCUs around here to teach those in. Yep. I think it, I think it's a conversation. Do it. They got satellite campuses here in Philadelphia. A couple mm -hmm. of the HBCUs. Lincoln definitely. I roll out to the HBCUs to teach that, though. And I, I roll out to the HBCUs to teach that. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't mad at you for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, talking about the massacres, right? As we talk about Tulsa, here's some of them. I don't think this is all of them, but there. That's definitely not all of them, but that's definitely a lot of them. Right. So, we got. Rosewood, Clinton, Elaine, Vicksburg, Slocum, Colfax. I can't pronounce this. Alapusa, Alusa, right? That's there's a, real. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's there, but there were several in Louisiana, right? You got Tulsa, Springfield, East Louis, East St. Louis, excuse me, Washington, Philly. Wilmington was crazy. Um, Charleston. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Whoa. It was getting busy in Louisiana. Oh my yeah. god! Listen, yeah. Jay, there's yeah. a dude on Twitter. I forget his name, but he did a whole uh, he did a whole tweet uh, whatever you call that thing about the massacres in Louisiana. Sheesh. Um, there's a lot. Oh uh, man, uh, he's a he's a he's a black historian, and he talks about how the migration was caused by. Black, I mean, by white people not wanting black people to succeed in the South, and yep. he talk about re he talk about Reconstruction being the time where black people really started to outpace uh, white people, Absolutely. and white people burning down black cities. So all of that stuff, you see, a lot of those things happen after Reconstruction. 
Mm -hmm. and, and that was all about uh Jim Crow, how Jim Crow came about and stuff. So he did a whole like uh uh I forget what you call those joints when they, they had like the like thread. 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 Yeah. 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 he did a whole thread about it. Um I gotta I gotta get on Twitter and matter of fact, I'm gonna get on Twitter now and see uh because I got I, yeah, I, I you know, find that, please well, we know that you, they were outnumbered. I mean, yeah, like we keep forgetting that. Like yeah. they were literally uh, white people were outnumbered in the south. Yeah, That's why they acted a fool. Gun, gunpowder, and, 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 and they well, they weren't really outnumbered because they had guns and the government on their side. Well, they right. initially didn't have the government on their side. They initially did not. So remember, that's how the whole party started: is that they were outnumbered, and they were eight. They the government was like, "Listen, this is not what we're going to do. Is we're going to get this back on track. These are new citizens, and they're you're not going to disenfranchise them." But remember, they struck a deal with what? Who was it? Was it? I can't. I want to say it was Jackson, but I feel like that may not be right. But they struck a deal to actually pull the troops out of the South, and that's when the Jim Crow when Jim Crow started. Yeah. And, I don't remember what exactly happened, but it was it was basically we as again we were used as pawns in a political play. But but if we were left alone and they actually had the troops and we were able to establish government, it wouldn't be it wouldn't have been like that because the numbers actually we, there were more slaves than there were white people. There just were or I enslaved mean, people. Excuse me. They are still yeah. outnumbered across the world right now. But you know they, they call us minorities. Call us minorities. I mean, listen, they got guns. We got guns too. What up, Stone dude? I'm sorry. Guys. All right, Raekwon, the chef's in the building. Um, Don Johnson says, I think the people on this live are the real warriors. The warriors for it more with mental strength than physical. I agree with that. I appreciate you, Don. All right, Tyrone says, but the Mayo people see how dangerous these people are if they are redirected. Also, in my hood, we protected all of the hood dudes as long as they didn't attack women and children. Cold. All right, so Willard. All right, so it's, it's, I just got stand by the history guy. Willard says, Professor Kamari, Willard. Yes, yes, Professor yeah. Willard says, Kamari, your history of migration of Oklahoma is on point. Oklahoma was advertised as a new frontier to be developed, and Native Americans were pushed there. The discovery of oil came later, and then white folks also, and then white folks, as usual, became more interested. The nickname of Sooners comes from these white folks and, and that came in wagons, claiming land without following the rules of distribution that was set up by the government. They came sooner and just took what they wanted. The area of Greenwood wasn't initially, uh, I guess I'm missing uh, the rest of that part. Mm -hmm. I guess Greenwood wasn't a part of that. Shout to Willard because he, uh, he he was a big uh, black. He, I think his degree is actually in African-American yep. history. Yeah, yeah, I believe it is. From yeah. Temple. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. So he, he did. Big guy on history, so salute to Willard. Thanks, Willard. Yeah, Willard, right. Willard get busy with the history. <laughs> yes, he does. <sighs> hey, hey, Andrea. Uh, she says it's in the DNA. <laughs> hey, Andrea. Mm -hmm. Other people's property. I, lo I love amazing use of emojis. That is, that's why I'm laughing. About it. <laughs> yes, that's an art. Every, everybody's taking shots if they come in. If we if we uh, shoot the podcast at our house. Oh, hey, let's let's, let's do it. Ah. Uh, I might I might be off the wagon that day though, so I gotta see. I don't know if I'm gonna be drunk around y'all. Y'all be talking crazy about me. You see, Mister Yahoo, Mister Yahoo is too big for us, y'all. <laughs> he, 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 he too big. All oh, right, so yeah. Adrian said yes, Courtney. We need to do some things underground and off the grid. I agree. I agree. Yes, sir. There is a town in Connecticut that has been has been for on sale for about three years with a few billion. Yep. Shoot the the issue of the issue of buying towns, y'all. Is if you buy towns, you have to lay a lot of the service lines oftentimes. And then that's a whole other level of money. Yes, the land may be a couple million, but getting sewage systems ran, electrical systems ran, Wi Fi towers in there. The it, one that Jose is talking about is already up and running. It's up and running. And it's for sale? It's for sale. Hmm. Yo, shoot the link, yo. Yeah, shoot the link. Let's talk about it. Blow has a strategy. So uh, Dwight's talking about Charles Blow. What's up, uh, Dwight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Dwight. Another another guy with the books. Dwight with the books is. Uh, yes, Dwight is the official librarian. That's right. All right. So uh, Adrian says, "No, I'm not too sweet on the South. The only thing I like is open carry." I get it. Mm -hmm. The color law talks about how the government holds a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. for redlining. Absolutely, but again, people. 
don't get it. So then we get into these conversations again about holding ourselves or pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps. And it's deeper than that. I'm all for personal responsibility. I'm sure everybody on this panel is all for it. Yeah. But when people, folks initially cheat, like that's a that's an issue. That's it an is. issue. Listen, I'm reading the book Cast right now, and it's taking me so long to get through it because I literally have to take breaks because it's like it's ex- it's mentally it's exhausting. It, like, is. Yo, it really hurts like to read the book. I'm a, I'm gonna make my way through it, but like just reading that book because I mean she's laying out her her case for why it's a caste system, but she's giving you like example after example. It's like okay, so now I'm depressed after this, and now you want to tell me how they're doing it in education. Now you want to tell me how they're doing it in politics. Now you want to tell me, and it's like. It's, it's just mentally draining, but your your point is correct, Kamara. When you start off cheating, I mean, it's an issue. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tracy. White women are the most dangerous for, dangerous to us. They want the black man, want to be like the black woman, and they and the support of LGBTQI <laughs> and want the protection of white women. I have a serious phobia. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a very interesting situation. And I feel like, but it's been, but it's honestly been kind of like in terms of caste, like it's been, it's been kind of solidified in the government. Like we always talk about affirmative action and everyone gets upset about affirmative action, but the biggest beneficiaries of affirmative action are white women. It's because gender is actually in terms of the scrutiny is a lower scrutiny than than of race. And I think everybody like people don't quite understand that. But then also some of the things that, you know, I think we talk about the woman who, um, you know, basically lied on Emmett Till. But ultimately, all she did was light the fire. The gas was already there. They were right. looking for something. Look at like Tulsa. Yeah. Yo, I, Tyron, Tyron, I want you to not quote that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, also, you? too, um, have y'all watched um, Lovecraft Country? No, I've only watched like one episode. I didn't get a chance to get into it and get into it. So, Are we bringing that back? Okay. I think they're supposed to be on a possibly a different platform, but it is a story told by us with the backdrop of it being the era when the Tulsa massacre happened. And it's a little bit of a, a, a different lens because it's supposed to be kind of sci-fi uh not sci-fi uh more like um uh what's it called when it's scary horror horror yeah. it was it's it's supposed to be like this backdrop of horror with changing the stories to be a little bit more horrific in a storytelling sci-fi kind of space mm-hmm. but the backdrop is Tulsa and when you look at how she tells the story from the production, like you see the situations where they're all in the communities, they're getting ready for a prom. And then next thing you know, they hear the shots ringing out. They see people running. They see people going into the blocks with cars and, you know, shotguns and, and torches and ready to just kind of like do damage. And it's, it's scary because it's supposed to be scary from a horror horror space but it's even more scary when you actually think about it from a historical standpoint like this really happened so is what is is lovecraft country similar to watchmen um well why is it different it's 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 it's, it's different like i get your point though Kamari, but it's more well i haven't seen lovecraft that's what i was asking yeah Yeah, so so watchmen was like it's not the same it's two different things it's it's, it's different it's different they're just both set in tulsa yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. It's fiction. It's fiction, but it's not like in a in a storytelling space of a, a, a fictional characters that never existed ever. Okay. All right, cool. But cool. you should watch it. All right, we'll do. So Liz says homeboy really didn't press charges and could have hashtag. And I think that's the thing that made me the most frustrated. It's like, sir, like and, but I think here's the thing. I think it's a double edged sword because at some point you don't want to always be. You just want to kind of go into oblivion. And if you if you do press charges, this will be going on for a year plus. Yep. Sometimes you just want your life back. So I, I get that. Um, and I, I think it, I think it's a crime to um, to make people kind of give it up for their, you know, for the for the culture. If that makes sense. Because I, um, I think that's that's a hard burden to bear. Not everybody can. Um, but again, I also feel like, at what point do you protect yourself? 
Because at the end of the day, like, but for it actually going the way it did, which could have been just a millisecond different, a couple of minutes different, you could have actually been a hashtag, easily been a hashtag. New York PD, NYPD gets it busy. So let's not play those games. And I think that's a very, you know, if what she said was, if they believed her story, you would have really been in trouble, sir. So again, like you gotta protect yourself. Like at some point you have to be so incensed about what happened to you that you want to fight back because- The crazy part, he had to call the police. He had to call them. He had to go. To protect himself. He called the police. He filmed it and called the police so he could protect himself. Like that's that'll crazy. tell you how dangerous he thought that situation was. Right. Let's, <laughs> check out, let's check out this comment about Don. I think this is important. So Don Johnson says, "Low key, you might have just saved that young man's life." You did. Don't tell her how the cops would have handled that situation. That's a you fact. Did. You that's did. That's a fact. It's, it, it's, it's sad to say that it might be true, but it's also sad when you think about it. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. But listen, we have to act practical at all times, right? And no, so three hours. Three hours. What, what you did was very practical. And very useful. So kudos to you again, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. I right, let's giving grace, village minded. Salute, Jimmy. Right. Facts. Listen, because I ain't gonna lie to you, Don. I'm I don't mess with the police here. They might have came and killed me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, to be honest. Exactly. All right, right, so Adrian, Adrian's giving more flowers. Jimmy's a good one. No lie. My fingers would have dialed the police quickly. <laughs> I'm not approaching any man, especially one doing something illegal. Too much risk to myself. And I think that's the dynamic difference. I think that's the dynamic difference too. Like if it's a black woman versus some illegal activity, and then if it's a black man, I know a lot of times, even dealing with stuff when it comes to property management with my dad, like we would have discussions about different things depending on the tenant on who would be the one to actually approach the tenant about whatever was going on because it was received differently if it came from me or if it came from him right so i think that's the village-minded conversation that needs to be had when you're trying not to literally like dismantle somebody's entire life like if you don't care it is what it is but if you're village-minded it's like look i'm gonna try to work with the young man if he's sensible he'll figure it out but if not you got the people too yeah Tracks. All right. So uh Elizabeth says we can learn from our ancestors, absolutely. And I can uh, observe the Jews. Right. Facts. But we aren't Jews. Well, we can debate that, but I'm not going there. And we don't have to reach as we should, as we are not white and we are not Jews. All right. I, I don't think it's anything wrong with taking a structure that's working and modeling it or using things about it to create our own structure. Mm-hmm. Right, I say model, not mimic. Right, yeah, we, yeah. Mimic. Mm-hmm. we yeah, can but model. I think it's really dangerous when you don't. We're saying model. We can o- we only see on the outside. We have no idea what the insides are. <laughs> that's that's she fair, said, but we don't got nothing right now. She said, uh, she said, but we aren't Jews. Kamari almost got in this full hotel. He did. He did. Oh, 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 right so. Yeah, the full hotel came out and started going in. Exactly. I was like, it's eight thirty. We don't got enough time. I thought he was reaching for the kufi. I'm like, uh oh. He only put on a turban. Yeah. No. No. I can't. Too much. You won't. You won't talk to me as Baba Mar. No. Right. That's a <laughs> what is no. going? No. How did we get here? No. I mean, we are, we are, but I ain't going that deep. I ain't going that deep. Oh not, today. Not, today. not today. Not today. Oh, I got the oh my God. But I, I got Elizabeth point, and I'm not arguing it. I agree. I mean, I think the overall point is we're not white, and we should always remember that. And I get what Courtney's saying, right? And I get what all of us saying, right? A lot of times when people say this. They say, why can't we just be white? I'm never saying that. Like, I'm proud of who yeah, I am, where okay. I come from, the whole nine. So I'm never say saying that? that's what they're implying. Listen, man. Them no, but that's what I'm like, why folks. can't we be like white folks? Why can't <laughs> we be like good, wholesome white folks? Man. Eat apple pie and play baseball. That I mean, that's what a lot of people are saying. Man, they just start watching. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, so Tracy ain't telling no lie. I think I, all right, Tracy ain't telling no lie. Here we go. I need us to also count economic massacres, any major white city, especially on the shore. 
were all black owned and run towns. Legislation and redistricting killed that pro- progress. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. You, you skipped Tyrone's comment, though. Where okay. is it? Oh yeah. Damn, order down. We they need JM. Door, you always need JM. I did. I did tell him to close the door, though. And he closed. You, close work, the door. you working, right? Oh, oh man. man, yo, you are the shadiest shade shade giver in the history of shady shadiness. And I love you. I love you for it. <laughs> I, it's just the shadiest. You just you shady as all shadiness. That's so funny though. Like, how can you not? <laughs> yo. Don't ever oh, call Crazy oh, Nice again. It. So hold on, y'all. Let's get to this Crazy one. Nice again. That, <laughs> hold on, y'all. That's why they stigmatized watermelon. Black people were making a great deal of money farming it, and then white people associated with buffoonery. I never knew that. I never knew that. Hmm. Yeah, it was farming, Middle and watermelon. it was also all of the um, the health benefits of watermelon. Watermelon has a bunch of health benefits. Yes. Yeah. I want to know how y'all get seedless watermelon though. How you how you even do that? GMOs. <laughs> I ain't with the seedless. Fire, farming as a whole, food is food is revolutionary. Facts, facts. I love that. All right, Adrian says a few years ago in an offline conversation at work, almost a myriad of women, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, etc., they were discussing some world issues, and for some reason, the white woman kept looking at black women when talking about solutions. I told one straight up, I'm not that black woman. If other folks can get their itch together, that shit will have to burn. Most of them truly expect us to take on and solve every issue, aka muling. Ooh, mm. mule. Mm. I'm not your mule. I like. I like that. Uh, I deal with many white women with a long hand. As you I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. That's a really powerful point. I mean, it even if it came to elections, they were looking at us like. I mean, like even from looking at Stacey Abrams to looking at the the vote, I'm just like, yo, I shouldn't have to. Yo, I didn't even ask to be here, let alone fix y'all problems. And here I am, and here I am, other people standing with me, trying to fix the the ship that y'all have taken off the rails, off the like off the dock. We are off the. We have hit every every single glacier. We are sinking, and you want me to help bail you out. And it's like, it's not fair. I mean, it's just not fair. I mean, what did Brother Malcolm say? He said the most disrespected person is the black woman. You know, that like, just, it's crazy. But you want us to fix everything. Mm-hmm. Like, abs- like you want us to, to, we're supposed to fix people. We're supposed to s- fix issues. But every time I turn around, if, you, if I have something to say or someone like me, another black woman has something to say, you want to tell us to shut, the, shut up, shut up. See how oh, you almost let that go, huh? Almost okay. let it rip, but not today. Oh, uh, okay. All right, Elizabeth. I got you, Elizabeth. I got you. The right. nerd in me just just retorted, blurted out. Right, so right. You. All right. Um, he wanted to put his hat on. The the dude, Michael Harriet. <laughs> yeah, I follow Michael Harriet. Put it in the uh, chat for me, Corey. Let me pull it up. I'm trying to find the actual tweet. <clears throat> All right, big facts. For your sanity, absolutely. All right, Monica says Freedom Freedom Farmers by Dr. Monica White is a great book. It discusses agriculture as a black freedom movement, as it should be. I gotta check that out. I mean, um, once you get fresh, fresh, like that you actually did with your hands, it tastes different. It tastes what? different. Food that you make with your hands, that you actually plant it, it's just complete. I mean. Not just because it actually is fresh and all those other things that process. Um, that but ego. Did <laughs> you say? I said ego is part of you. Like I made this. Like, yeah. Yeah. Ego has a taste to it. It's like <laughs> yeah, ego nice. Has it's like that it extra taste. sauce. That extra <laughs> sauce. <laughs> all right. So Elizabeth says we don't have a choice to, to a certain extent. Unfortunately, when it comes to muling, as we suffer the greatest loss. That's facts. Fact. That That's is facts. Fact. You gotta start asking for you gotta start asking for a piece of the table for helping out putting the table back together. But we we brought the table. we brought a whole brand new table. And no, I know, it. but fixing it. If we gonna come in here and fix it, you gonna give us a piece of this table too. Like we do that. We, yeah. we black women are done. Stacey Abrams, like we're done. Like we did. We pulling all this stuff together. Like it's got to be a conversation. Like no, no. 
All right, so I want to talk about this real quick, y'all, before we get out of here. Okay. So, Forbes. Forbes put this up earlier, and I have a major issue with it. Can anybody guess why I have a major issue with this? They're always equating us to somebody else. To, to, to so white. Somebody. Yeah, and it's like, first of all, O.W. Gurley. Like, let's talk about O.W. Gurley real quick, right? Black man, Kansas, moved to Oklahoma to do some things. Um, moves to Oklahoma and, and starts some stuff up. Especially, he's a major, major contributor in Green, the Greenville section of Tulsa. Made he had a, a hotel in, um, in in Black Wall Street and everything. Was a major contributor, major organizer. He oftentimes was the go between between black folks and white folks. He was kind of like an ambassador. But why? And I see us do it also, black folks. Why do we always want to compare ourselves to white folks? I really. Don't get it. But when we look at A.W. Gurley, O.W. Gurley's work, right, this man is greater than Bezos, in my opinion. Bezos never had the Klan on his back, never had to deal with riots, never had to deal with racism, never had to deal with exclusionary economic policies, right? Bezos is a man that came from an upperly upper class, middle class family that worked for a hedge fund, got some hedge fund funding. And then he was able to build Amazon. Not to take anything away from Bezos, but where the dogs at? Where the water hoses at? Where the guns at? None of that happened with him. So I feel it's really, really, really bad and poor taste. This is super disrespectful. Yes. And that was my comment. I'm like, this is disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And black folks, I'm going to say this, right? We got to stop going along and get along, right? We should be shutting this shit down every time we see it because again these folks get the mass publicity when it comes to writing our narratives and then our narratives get out there and they get skewed skewed and goofy and that's really really sad we should never ever ever compare a black person to a white person but that's seeing the stat- standard you that's the pedagogy of the oppressed i mean you have the oppressor is seen as the standard so, I mean, until you remove them as the standard, we are always going to compare ourselves to the quote, quote, standard. And so we have to really change our mindset to really determine what our, or come up with a new standard, whatever that may be, whoever that may be. But I think we can't ignore that that is actually the standard that everybody goes on. That's a world standard. Because even when I was in the Philippines, everybody was trying to be white. They were taking bleaching creams, going hard in the paint to be white. So again, I'm not saying, all I'm trying to say is that I'm not, and Liz makes a point, she said, I don't understand comparing us to whatever you may call it, but my concern is, is that if that's envisioned as a standard, you're going to want to compare yourself to the standard. We do that generally, we do that in math. So again, you have to change the standard. Math and yeah. medicine, and that's why the Black World Project is so about that a lot. My, fo- my brother Akil talks about that a lot, man. He talks about uh, rebranding math because he says a lot of the historians that math is named that didn't create the shit that they that they get credit for. They oh, never talk about in Hotep. Huh? They never talk about in Hotep. Yeah, they don't, they don't talk about any of the actual creators of the math because all of those gr- Greek people studied in Africa. Correct. They studied in Africa. They studied. They studied in African places, and so how did how did they come up and formulate something that wasn't that that they got from somewhere else? Just like they discovered America, you can't discover something that was already here. Just like they didn't discover that math, they just named it after them because they had the power at the time to do so. Listen, man, they just start washing, man. You know, like somebody, it's like somebody told me before, man. White man ain't invent nothing but the patent office. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then they use it to steal a lot of patents from black folks because most of these patents in this country were from black folks. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Uh, all right, so let's finish up. I think there's a couple of comments that I missed so far. Um, Adrian says you you had a right you had a right the first time or you had a right the first time, Courtney. They want to tell us to STF shut the fuck up. We are considered angry and aggressive when we decide to speak up for ourselves. That's why I let it rip from the get-go. 
Let's go. Got the rookie out. Let's go, got Adrian. The out. All right, Adrian also says, I feel like you either give us a seat at the table or we flip it. Man, I'm choosing violence on the Lord. <laughs> no, I say, I say, don't flip it. Don't take a seat. We just build our own. And I'm gonna flip theirs. I'm gonna flip theirs. Or flip theirs. I want to do all of them. Yeah, yeah. The answer is all of the above. Exactly. And and flip theirs. Uh, and, and flip theirs. And energy. We need. We need to put most of our energy towards ourselves. And no, I said I'm gonna do that. Four. I'm, I'm going to feel good. That's going to make, that's going to give me the general. That's going to make you feel good. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, while y'all flipping, I'll be building. That's yeah, we'll cool. Because yeah. yeah. then after we flip this, now we got a table to sit at. Yeah, it's not going to take that much energy. Flipping is going to be easy. All right, bake those. <laughs> that man, that, <laughs> that man, while genius doesn't give a F, a single F about anyone but his bag. I would agree. Definitely. And go on to the and going to the moon and Mars, but that's about his bag. Why are you on the moon? <laughs> I really don't understand comparing us to trash. Facts. His, his Facts. Ex and bit my sister. Facts. His ex-wife is the goat, though. Just being Facts. real. She is. She is. Yo, Elizabeth, just check me hard. I gotta. I gotta acknowledge that you're right. That is how demolition works. Build and destroy. Come destroy on, Elizabeth. Come on. Build. Come on. All right. Facts. I'll give you that. I'll oh, the queen. I'll oh, the queen. <laughs> Meanwhile, why do you have the moon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in closing, y'all, in closing, what what do y'all think about history? About because Courtney brought up something, right? This whole pedagogy of the oppressed. Mm. How do we change the narratives and make OW Gurley's and Robert Church's the ultimate, ultimate in our community? So Tracy's point, this is why we need what's happening now, right? Because, you know, show a clean glass. Instead of continuously telling them why they shouldn't do something else, give them an alternative. Show our folks a clean glass and, you know. That's I think what we did yesterday. Them. We just showed them what's possible. Fact. That's right. That's right. And we, that's never, we, we, never mentioned, we never mentioned a 6F at any point during that whole seminar. Absolutely not, unless it was slander. So, therefore, my point is. Like you just gotta show them a clean glass and you have to show them like like what we can do as a people. We build together, we big each other up, right? We we support each other. And and listen, man, I was so proud of Courtney yesterday. Someone asked her a question from the crowd about um it was an accounting question. And she said, What you gotta go do is you gotta like go look up Kamari Gellis, the finance rebel. Yeah, he, man. He's yeah. an EA because he's an EA and he can answer that question. That right there, I love to see that because how people talk about you when you're not even in the room. That's, 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 that's how they really feel. Wow. And she that's has you in front of the whole in front of a sold out crowd. She yep. talked about you. Right. Yep. So, wow. so I was in the room and I wasn't even in the room. Even though if y'all if y'all was to stand face to face, she might bite your nose off. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but she got your back. She got your back. She showed you another hey, phone. Listen, phone. That. <laughs> But that's what sisterhood and brotherhood is about. Absolutely, but that's my point in saying that is that's how we have to like big each other up and talk about each other when we're not there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's part of it is showing that clean glass and showing our folks that like we can do. We don't need to rely on it. like you know we need to be the black this or the black that. I mean, unless you're like the black Brian Gumble or something. Never mind. But I do, I do feel like it was a powerful conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a powerful conversation in that room to like really discuss with them to let them know like. Half the panel, we're all friends. Like we all do business yeah. with each other. We all like each other. We all have other stuff outside of just that that panel or that event that we actually collaborate on. So it's kind of like letting them know that like you have power movers in your community that actually have a village and they're doing things. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to feel like you know you're on an island somewhere when there are networks out here that you can tap into. But, yeah. this, but that's what Jim was talking about, about collaborating sideways and not just us. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, right? I got to get Tracy. I learned and, that you know, no, no, I'm saying you gave her, you you quoted her. You know what I mean? Like it, it, about collaboration, though. Yep. Because yep. You, when you collaborate sideways, the only way to go is up. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the term is network across. Network mm -hmm. across. Okay. That's the okay. term. I just say what Tracy told me. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, but but that's the only way you can go because right. my thing is, if everybody's combined time and combined resources goes into something, rarely does it fail. Right. 
So Okay. Okay. Courtney, anything to add on that? <laughs> Don is crazy, yo. Don is hilarious. No, I mean, we covered it. I mean, we had yesterday, I just really am I so I I'm I'm gonna put myself on blast a second. So um, I Okay, I'm gonna put myself on blast. I had a conversation with Corey, but last week, Corey, last yeah. week. And I was dragging my feet about a strategy. And it's not that I didn't even have what I needed to do the strategy, but I was allowing everything to get in my way. And I think it's just, it spoke to the power in that room because as I was sitting there, I said, let me just buy what I need to buy to do this strategy. Let me put myself in position to do the strategy because I was around greatness and I was reminded about it. But I think a lot of times we sit in our silos, we sit in these rooms as entrepreneurs or whoever we are in our spaces. And I think, we just uh, it reminds us about the importance of community and we have to be community and village minded and mm-hmm. sometimes just being in the room makes you level up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think we need to have a show talking about what village minded really means and go really deep on that mm-hmm. okay because i oh, think there's a lot of there's a lot of examples that we all can pull from our own personal experiences doing that i know the audience does a lot of that and so that's something else we, we need to put out there as well. Definitely something else we need to put out I just there. Put the, I just put the book in there that uh, the boy was talking about, the history stuff. I put it in there. Okay. It's an actual mm-hmm. book, though? It's a book? Oh. Yeah, it's called Black as Fuck, The History of the <laughs> White Wash Story of America. I'm buying it already. I'm buying it off the title. Oh, please. Oh, please. Just off the title. And I'll, I'll follow him. I've shared some of his stuff before with us. Some of y'all didn't. The unwhitewashed history of America. All right, so here it is. Oh, it didn't come out yet. It says pre-order. Okay. Is it pre-order? Okay. Oh, it's a hardcover, y'all. So it's due to come out. Wait a minute. It's due to come out January 25th, 2025. I'm going to pre-order this just on the shrimp for the time. 25? You said 25? I'm sorry. January 25th, 2022. Okay. January 25th. 2022. That's hard. No, no, no. What he's doing with, with a lot of the stories that he tells on his Twitter about some of the history and stuff that he was doing, he was doing the research and he was putting it some of the research in his Twitter. I got so you. this is the book that he's putting it in. Got you, got you. Okay, I'm with that. I'll pre- I'll still pre- I'm really excited about that. That's dope. And I think more of us, uh, shout out to Jimmy and Corey. Um, I think more of us should be writing books because more of us, we talked about, we can, can talked about telling our story multiple times in this conversation. And right. I think everybody on this panel needs to have a book or two talking or about, or or three four, uh, talking about this, our story through their lens, mm-hmm. because again, other people will write fiction and call it nonfiction mm. and, and position it as our story. And the more that we can actually tell our story in our voice through our lens to people who look like us, the more that we have the ability to change the trajectory of our people. Man, if you die, who tells your story? That's my favorite song off Hamilton, by the way. Um, oh, I should put that in the thing. Oh, Jimmy. That is my favorite. That is. I mean, ain't a lot of you. But listen, yeah. I got an idea. We should all write a book together called The Black Wealth Project. Boom. That's done. Group project. Done. Ooh. That's done. done. <laughs> we can put it out for pre-order now coming in uh, January 2023. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm nah, but he's writing a, he's writing a, a long ass history book, so I can understand why he got no, it. You know what I mean? No, but no, that's still not that far out. When Kamari first said it, he said 2025. That's what I was I about did. to say. I was about to say, hold up. Damn, that's hard as rocks. Damn, yeah. that's four so years from now. 2025? <laughs> But listen, y'all, listen, every week you guys are here with us. You support us. You share our content. You share the show. You interact with us. And we definitely appreciate y'all. Listen, it's the 100 year anniversary of Tulsa. It spanned from May 31st to June 1st. Our ancestors were being shot, lynched and burned in terror, all because they wanted to be free, all because they wanted to be economically empowered. Today is 2021. It's May 30th, 2021, we can now be our ancestors' greatest dream, our greatest victory. So don't forget that. And don't forget our ancestors along the way. And share the story of Tulsa with some young people and some older folks, too, 
who may not know it. Again, appreciate y'all. We'll be back next week with a new story, new show. Thank you. Thank you. Same project, Tom. Same project channel. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind.